Entertainment on One Hit Wonder Wednesday. Back to the JT Show, Gerard and Rhino in the studio. Now joining us, our good friend, the attorney and former chairman of the Mississippi GOP, Lucian Smith. Good good afternoon. To be, hey, good to be with you, Gerard. I was about to say good morning, but you're right. It's, yeah. uh, it's the afternoon now. Plowing into it. So before we get – we're going to dive into some of the uh, activities going on up yonder in there in Washington, D.C., and there's a bunch. But I ask you to handicap the Supreme Court decision on the lawsuit pertaining to Initiative 65. What's your thoughts about what we'll see there? It's going to be really interesting um, to see to see what the Supreme Court's do. What Supreme Court does. I, I haven't read the briefs that were filed, but I, I watched the argument. And, you know, the gist of it, uh, and you know this, I know you were having this conversation with the senator before, mm-hmm. the, the gist of it is the, the the section of the Constitution that allows for these initiatives says that your signatures have to come from the five congressional districts. It doesn't say the five congressional districts as they stood in 1991. It says the five congressional districts. Um, and so I tend to think that a plain reading of the Constitution says that if there aren't five congressional districts, then you cannot get the signatures to put it on the ballot. Now, right. that's a difficult position because 70% of uh, the voters in Mississippi want a medical marijuana program in the state. But, you know, you look through the statutes, there are, there are individual laws on the books that do reference the uh, congressional districts uh, when we had five, but most of them, if my recollection is correct, explicitly say the five congressional districts as of such and such date. And so I don't know if Hmm. the drafters of that provision of the Constitution didn't think about it. It's possible, and this was sort of raised during the uh, during the oral argument. It's entirely possible that the drafters of the Constitution did it deliberately because they didn't like hmm. having an initiative process, but went forward with it on the assumption that at some point it would be invalid. So, I, I, th- I could see the Supreme Court going either way. Um, and you, you saw, you know, it's, it's tough to read too much into the questions that a judge asked during oral argument, but. Uh, but they ask tough questions of both sides, and so I think either either one of those is a possibility. You know, actually, your your speculation there is uh, consistent. I shouldn't call it speculation, but your analysis is consistent with my speculation, which is I do think, in fact, that there's some degree of resistance to the citizens having a say at the ballot box in the lawmaking process. I, I, I think there is. I think there is. I mean, I, I'll say this. You know, I am a supporter of I – mean, I think the people ought to be able to change the Constitution. Sure. Um, I think the problem is when you use the Constitution to make policy, yeah. it gets very dangerous. Sure. Um, because sure. words, especially words in laws and in constitutions, have, have very real meanings. And as conservatives, I don't want a judge to sit there and say, well, I bet this is what they really meant, because I want the voters to have the ability uh, to elect their representatives, to have the representatives change the laws, and then to vote those representatives out if they do wrong. And so you, you take that power away when you let judges get really creative in reading things. Uh, And that's what's problematic. It's one thing to say, we're going to amend the Constitution to say the lieutenant governor can only serve two terms. Okay, that's clear. But when we start getting into things like medical marijuana, like education funding, which we had with Initiative 42 a few years ago, uh, it's very tough to change. And almost every time a major piece of legislation passes – you see the legislature come back the next year and say, you know, there were a few unintended consequences. We're going to have a technical amendments bill that's going to fix some of these problems from last year. Um, and the problem is, if you do it in the Constitution, you got to go out, you got to get the signatures again, you got to wait till the next statewide election uh, to have a vote on it. Uh, and so, if there's something that's wrong, it's very tough to fix. And, yeah. and I'll say specific to 65. I think we're going to see that with 65. I mean, I know people want a medical marijuana problem, want a medical marijuana program, but I think when you start looking at some of the zoning restrictions, I think you're going to have people say, I think they're going to call Senator Sparks, call their their legislator and say, y'all got to fix this. There's a there's a marijuana dispensary, uh, you know, 200 feet from my church, and we don't like that. Right. And they're going to say, well, guys, this is this constitutional. we yep. we got to put it on the ballot. So anyway, means- that's, a, that's a long answer to your question. <laughs> no, I appreciate that. Uh, so... Um, 
Yeah, so the, the, this issue about how how many people voted for it, uh, that we're getting into kind of the weeds there, but it's 62 uh, percent, according to these figures I'm looking at. You agree with that, Rhino? You're looking at the same data. 62 uh, percent voted for a program of the total ballots cast. I believe that's the figure. Which, I mean, if my napkin math is correct, even if everybody that didn't even vote on it voted no, it would still would have passed. Right. So, uh, yeah, my friend Rusty in Greenville is giving me a hard time about that. So it's 62 percent. And so we could get into the semantics of defining what is overwhelming, because I I said the same thing that Lucian said. Uh, Seventy-three percent of the people who voted uh, on the ballot measure voted for 65. That's been the, the data that we have provided. Pretty sure that's accurate. Yeah. And I, I think in politics, 62% is overwhelming. It's not 100%, but, you know, if there's another option, you're not going you're not going to do a lot better than two-thirds. Well, heck, Lucian, let's, let's think about it. Almost any uh, material race, any significant race for a seat, 62%, you're killing the yeah, other that's side. A, that's, a great, that's a great result uh, <laughs> if, you're, uh, if you're a candidate. You wanna, you, you're, you're happy with 50% plus one, but 62% you'd be thrilled with. So appreciate that, Rusty, but I ain't backing down from my position on that. So um, <laughs> Anyhow, so Rusty makes point that our job is to deliver accurate information. I believe we did. And, uh, and if we're not, I'll, uh, I'll certainly... Uh, make amends for that, and we'll correct it. But I think we did in this case. But anyhow, I appreciate you weighing in on that. We yeah, shall see what the Supreme Court does. So I'm going to ask you, like I did uh, as a private citizen, not as a lawmaker, but uh, that I, same question I asked of the senator that was just here. Would you support uh, a mechanism in our state that would allow the people to initiate a measure, place it on the ballot, that would establish or amend law? as opposed to the current situation, which is we can only amend the Constitution. Would you support that? I I think it'd be better than what we have now for just that reason. I mean, I I think if the people, you know, if if there is overwhelming support for something and there's not action happening at the legislature, I think the best way to deal with it is by beating the legislators who you don't think are – uh, or, or doing the right thing, but but yes, I think we would be better served having something that allowed that kind of direct referendum rather than having it done in the Constitution, because then the legislature could come in and correct it. Yeah, it, it would be. So, uh, of course, you then wonder, well, if the, the people go to the ballot box to do something like this, and the legislature just not happy with it, and they go start marking it up and changing it or whatever, that's a risk, but uh, you know, it's. I, I read. I, I take ballot, ballotopedia. Uh, they. I subscribe to that, and I remember back in November the overwhelming, just large number of measures on the ballot across the country. Right. I mean, it just blew me away how many of those there were for right. all kinds of things. And, and you, see, California is a good example of this, Unbelievable. where it, it almost it, you almost get the sense that the legislature becomes irrelevant. Yeah. And I think. I think you want a relatively high bar um, in terms of the number of signatures that you have to get to put these things on the ballot, um, because I, I, I think the best sort of policy gets made through a deliberative process that's iterative. That uh, good point. A, a, and doing a you know saying this is what we're going to do, having a bunch of money behind it, uh, isn't always the best way to do it. And that's the other piece when you when you do those sort of direct. Uh, legislating like that, it it makes money even more important because most people, and you know, if it's a hot button issue, it's one thing. If you're, you know, medical marijuana may have been exciting enough to get people out to the vote to, to vote independently, but if it's not, you're going to have a lot of people who show up to vote for president or governor, and if somebody's willing to put a million dollars on something that benefits them personally, you know, you, you might could outco- have outcomes that wouldn't happen through an open legislative process over at the Capitol. So I, I there's some risk there. I agree. Uh, before we go to break here, uh, there's uh, the data suggests that we had people that did not vote for a presidential candidate that voted for or against the ballot measure for medical marijuana. Yeah, I do think it brought some people to the to the polls, probably on both something. sides. But didn't like either presidential <laughs> candidate. we got to take a break. We'll come back. Lucian Smith is our guest. Stay with us on the JT. 